Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord in his strength. Constantly seek his face. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, a great joy to be with all of you as we celebrate these sacred mysteries. Let us begin by calling to mind our sins and asking God for mercy, especially in those small ways that we have failed to follow him. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. <coughs> your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed, blessed, who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. 
You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of wheat flour, until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a psychologist I uh, sometimes enjoy, Dr. Jordan Peterson. He uh, became big in the early two, or in the in the in about 2016. Um, he posts his lectures on, on YouTube. But there's this principle he talks about uh, where basically, if you get the little things right, your life will go well. If you do the small things right, the little things that make up every moment of the day, your life will go well. Uh, and he talks about that in the context of sometimes, right, we strive to make a difference by focusing on the big things in life, you know, how can I change the world or how can I change this or that situation? And in a sense, our lives um, besides for that can be chaotic. And it's like, if something's out of, out of order, then you're going to have a hard time changing something or making some great difference. Uh, the last pope, Pope Benedict XVI, talked in, in his theology, he wrote a lot about building the faith of the little ones, strengthening the faith of the little ones. Uh, the everyday people who probably aren't going to work miracles, uh, aren't called to be a Mother Teresa. And he did this in the midst of like a church that was chaotic, right? We had a council and in many ways, right, you had like different factions of the church and, you know, for example, things like confession was thrown away in many places, right? Like practice basically stopped. Um, even some of the devotions, which can be abused, of course, but some of the devotions were uh, discouraged in the sense of, you know, don't, don't pray these specific prayers. But Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI, saw that in many ways this was shaking the faith of the everyday people who are really those who God came to call. He came to build up the faith of all of us. And those things that build up our faith that were being discarded, those small things were what sanctified people for thousands of years. And so in, in, in seeing that problem, Pope Benedict uh, really focused on building up the pious devotion of the faithful. And friends, it's in this context, I think we can think about this yeast image that Jesus uses today. Jesus takes this image of something small that a pinch of it makes a great difference. It creates, it leavens a whole batch of flour, creating a batch of dough. And friends, that's the spiritual life, and that's really all of life. The small, everyday things that go into our lives are what at the end of life we're going to look back on and say, well, this was a well-lived life of continued sanctification, or, you know, my life was chaotic and I didn't get it right. The little things. Think about our lives of prayer, our lives of faith. It begins by a basic commitment. 
Each and every day, Lord, I'm going to talk with you. Not beginning by some great action or trying to achieve some mystical experience, but simply conveying with the Lord, to the Lord what's on my heart. Sometimes praying the rosary and the great devotions to Mary begin by simply taking three minutes a day to pray a decade of the rosary. Eventually that decade leads you to a greater love for our mother and Jesus, and you start making the rosary a daily commitment. Going to mass, maybe you go to Sunday mass and you feel this call on your heart to begin going daily because you've received the Lord's love. Or in our first reading today, we talk about marriage. St. Paul talks about wives being subordinate to their husbands and husbands loving their wives as Christ loved the church. And it's this mutual outpouring of self for one another in the everyday moments that's going to build a marriage. Right? Don't think about like the great extraordinary moments in, in, in marriage. It's the how do I lay down my life for this other person at each and every moment? You know, in the small, subtle gestures, you know, walking and holding your spouse's hand, saying that kind word, um, doing the laundry, washing the dishes, taking care of the children. All of those small, everyday things are what lead one another to seeing this outpouring of love. And friends, ultimately, this littleness, I think, is what Jesus got right each and every day. Jesus could have worked all these extraordinary miracles, and he could have saved the world with the snap of his fingers. But I think he wants us to enter into the day-to-day -day littleness of our lives, like he did, right? He worked, I mean, relatively speaking, for 33 years, he didn't work a ton of miracles because he wanted us to see that the kingdom of God is achieved step by step in cooperation with God's grace. So for us today, friends, may we enter into our littleness, into our smallness, realizing that God isn't calling us to do great things, but to do the small things, as Mother Teresa would say, the small things with great love. May the little moments of life allow us to give something great to God. Let us present to the Father our needs and the needs of the world. For the church, may the Lord grant more people to respond generously to his call to the priesthood and consecrated life. We pray. For all in positions of leadership, may God encourage them in their decision-making and help them meet the needs of their people. We pray. For anyone who has lost faith in God, may the Lord bless them with compassionate witnesses to help them see his goodness and love. We pray. For all who worship here in faith, may the grace of the Holy Spirit help us to grow in charity and holiness. We pray. For our beloved departed, may they be welcomed into the joys of the heavenly kingdom. We pray. For the intentions in our heart this morning, and for Phyllis Scarso, the intention of this Mass, we pray. Almighty God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Jesus. 
by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given to you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, may this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but to your love and mercy be from your protection of my body and healing from any. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering to God.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Uh, just a reminder, this Friday will be All Saints Day, Holy Day of Obligation. Our Mass offerings are at 6.30 a.m., 9 a.m., which will include the school, and 7 o'clock p.m. Friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.